Yep. Le- LeBron, some of your uh, percentages this year weren't up to your standard. Uh, obviously tonight, hit it from the outside, hit it from the free throw line. What would you attribute that uh, accuracy to? Uh, just work. That's all. Um, guys, like I said, you guys asked me earlier about that in the season, and I said, uh, you know, it's nothing that bothers me because I know I put the work in, so it'll pay off. And, uh, you know, just been working, working on my craft, details, um, and, uh, and it paid off for me tonight. I want to ask uh, about a couple sequences with you and Russ tonight. Um, the alley-oop, double alley-oop, I guess, and then also you stepping in after he was fouled by Collins. Uh, one, I guess we just discussed both individually. The, the double alley-oop, kind of a rare play in today's game. Can you just break down what you were seeing as you get down the court? Um, yeah, obviously it was, we had the numbers. Um, and um, I think it was, um, you know, Trey Jones was back, so I didn't want to bounce it. Uh, I wanted to throw a high to try to keep it away from him. And, you know, Russ being a, you know, elite passer on this team, an elite passer in this game for quite a while. I figured I'd just keep trailing and see if he throw it back up, and he did, and I was able to reward that. And then as far as the foul, um, you know, that was a, it was a tough blow, obviously, you know. Um, uh, but I didn't want it to, uh, you know, let Russ, you know, escalate it, you know, any further, um, you know, especially with him bleeding like that. I didn't want it you know, the hair rush or anything to happen after that contact. So just try to step in there and just um, try to defuse it as much as much as possible. LeBron, you guys have won four of your last five. What are you seeing right now with this team? Um, I think we're just, you know, more and more on a string. I think we continue to learn each other. Uh, like I said earlier in the season, we just said we're a new group and we had a new system, a new coaching staff, and we trying to implement things on the fly. And we're trying to, you know, we and our uh, teaching moments was you know, during games and, and losing and unfortunately losing at times. And, you know, and it's just a sense of we're not really, you know, sure of each other. We don't know each other. But um, I think over the last couple of weeks, we continue to, you know, learn one another, continue to uh, play some good ball, share ball, um, you know, and uh, it's, it's definitely worked in our favor. LeBron, obviously, you know, you guys get the win, but 138 points to the Spurs tonight, uh, some rebounding issues, some defense issues. Do you feel like you guys – are tightening up those winning habits uh, aside from the bottom line? Do you feel like there's progress in some of those areas? Yeah, I mean, uh, we've made progress over the last couple of weeks. I mean, obviously tonight, you know, it was a tough one. I mean, coming to, it's a back-to-back versus a very young, uh, energetic team, and they're going to do a lot of running and gunning and shooting. And, um, you know, we had some game plans that didn't work to our favor tonight. Uh, we had some guys that we wanted to see if they would make from the outside. They did, but that was part of the game plan, and you tip your hat to that. But well, things that we can control is controlling the 39 points in transition. We can get back, obviously, with that. Um, the 25-second chance points, um, we can do better with that. Those are two of the points of emphasis. And then, you know, we had 17 turnovers for 24 points. So, you know, those are things that we can control. Um, you know, when you're out on the floor and you know, the guys are hitting threes, but you're getting great contests, you can't control those. You, you tip your hat. But some of the things that we can control, uh, we got to be better at. But um, – he was able to still find a way to win, and you try to find some good, even with the bad, throughout the course of uh, uh, of any game that you're playing. LeBron, when Russ got hit and the, the blood started to come out fast and somebody brought a towel out and you grabbed it and kind of like applied it yourself, I don't know if you see players typically doing that. Of course, he's your peer. Are there any like fatherly instincts or something when you see it like that and just wanting it to stop or what was going through your mind in, in that? Um, well, I saw where the cut was immediately, so I mean, it's just – Common sense, you know, put pressure on the, on the cut right away. Don't let it uh, continue to go, um, you know. And you know, before that we became teammates, we've you know always been like brothers and cool and things of that nature. So his health is more important than, than the game of basketball. So um, I'm just trying to stop that and let the training staff uh, do their job after we got him over to the bench. But I was I, I actually saw the cut right when it happened uh, once he got up off the floor and, and wanted to. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to do something to, to Zach. Good to see you. I just wanted to get your vet's perspective on kind of a broader thing. There's a lot of talk today about how much basketball players play before they even get to the NBA and what that potentially might cause for them in terms of potential injury once they are in the pros. Obviously, you, you've played 20 years yourself. You've got kids who are right in the middle of that pathway to the pros. What are your views on the year-round nature of the game today and the demands that it puts on players? Um, I think it's too much. I think it's too many tournaments. Um, 
I think it's uh, too much basketball, uh, too many basketball tournaments being played throughout um, the full year, and it's not allowing these, uh, you know, these kids to recover. Um, they go from playing all summer to right into school league, and then all summer again right into school league, all summer right into school league for four years, and then they go off to college or go play wherever they go to play. And um, if they're fortunate enough to get to the NBA, there's a lot of basketball, a lot of miles being put on their bodies. Um, I've noticed it over the last few years, and um, having kids of my own, I've allowed them to not play in certain tournaments. Um, I've told them just. You know, if you want to go and be a great teammate, cool. But, um, you know, if you want to sit out, you know, the first half of the tournament or if you want to sit out the first couple games or if you want to play every other game, and I completely understand. Um, you know, you have a lot of guys that come into our league and you wonder why some of the injuries are happening so early on in their careers. Um, could that be part of it? Um, possibly. Um, but, I, but I'm not sure. I know. Um, when I came into the league, and you know, guys were coming out of high school, there was not many league, there was not many tournaments. I'm sorry, um, throughout the summer, we did have our AAU tournaments. Yeah, yeah, there's way more tournaments. Yeah, way more. There's way more tournaments being played now than 20 years ago when, you know, me and my boys was in high school and we were playing. It's just, uh, and they want to play. They, you know, they want to play, but you got to try to stop them from playing as well. Um, but we shall see. We'll see what happens. Thanks, All right. Thanks.